Well, today we are in part number two of a collection of sermons that we're calling the Illustrations of Jesus. And we're doing two things kind of unique all summer long um, during this collection of sermons. The first is at the end of each service, we're going to participate in communion. Um, And so those of you at home, if you want to make sure right now, sprint to the kitchen, grab some grapes, grab a muffin, grab a piece of bread, a cracker, a juice, something that can represent the communion elements. We're going to partake together at the end of our service. The other thing that we're doing is uh, we have a journal that we put together with a special Bible reading plan um, that we're encouraging the entire church. If this is your church home, participate with us. Join the reading plan. You can pick one of these journals up for free. Uh, We gave over 100 away last week. Um, If you missed that opportunity, then try to figure out a time. When we get re-entered, they'll definitely be available. You have digital versions available online as well. And uh, so it's been exciting. It's been great to read through the Bible all together on a plan, walking in unity. And so we hope that you will uh, join in with us this summer as we study the Gospels, Um, and the words of Jesus and the life of Jesus and allow it to impact us in a new way. Well, we said last week that um, in these illustrations, these stories that Jesus told, it was kind of like a parable. Um, A parable just means to like come alongside where where Jesus would tell a story that kind of walked parallel with a truth to help us understand truth in a different way. It's kind of, he just kind of tossed these off to the side of a truth to help us get a better understanding. It's, it's a little bit like a, a riddle or a, or a really good tweet that makes you go, hmm, things that make you go, hmm. That's kind of what a parable is. And so uh, while you're turning to Mark chapter 4, uh, this morning where we're going to get started, I want to give you a riddle to think about. Those of you in the room, you can think about this. Those watching online, get ready to, to type your answer. Here's the riddle this week. It's this. David's parents have three sons. There are three of them, right? Here they are. Their name's Snap, Crackle, and the third son's name is David. It's important that we listen as much as we Watch what's going on in our lives. Snap, crackle, and David were their names. Uh, Mark chapter 4, we get into the parable of Jesus, and that'll all make sense here in just a minute. Mark 4, starting in verse 1, says this. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he decided to get into a boat, and he sat in it out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables. And in his teachings, he said, listen. Everybody say, listen. Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. The birds came up and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly. But because the soil was shallow, uh, but when the sun came up, the plants were then scorched. They withered because they had no root. Seems like that would be a really cool name for a message uh, sermon collection, Roots. Oh, wait. Yeah, if uh, you think that too, you could go on our Central Hub and take a listen to several of those. We just talked about the importance of roots. And he goes on to say this, other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that it did not bear grain. Some others still fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said this, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. I'm going to bring a message to you today entitled Mosquitoes and Ear Hair. Mosquitoes and Ear Hair. Go ahead. Mosquitoes and Ear Hair. Let's pray one more time. Jesus, thanks for your word. Lord, I pray that you would give us ears that we could hear today. May we not just see something. May we not just know something or or, or think of it on our own, but Lord, may we hear you speak to us today. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Mosquitoes and ear hair. I told my wife this week, I think I have the grossest sermon title I've ever used in all of my life in ministry. Ear hair. Did you know that we all have these microscopic hairs that uh, are in our ears that are moved by incoming sound waves? And, And those hair movements send this electrical signal to our brain. And that's how you interpret and understand sound. It's how you hear certain things. It's the little microscopic ear hair in your ears that help you hear what you actually hear. And as we age, those hairs get worn down and become less and less sensitive. Uh, To give you a little bit of context, the highest note on a piano is four kilohertz. The highest note on a piano is four kilohertz. Now, they say that adults 25 and over, 25 and over, by and large, cannot hear any frequencies above 16 kilohertz. So if you're over 25, the chances of you hearing higher frequencies get less and less. That number goes down further and further and further as as you age, because the, the microscopic ear hair begins to wear down. Now, there's a group of people who decided to be really smart and ingenious, and uh, they created a, a, a ringtone. They manufactured a certain tone that, was, uh, that they called the mosquito tone. It was called the mosquito tone. And the mosquito tone uh, was uh, used as ringtones on cell phones, uh, and students began to use it because it would ring or go at a frequency that was so high that their teachers, who were over 25, could not hear said frequency. They created this, and, and the mosquito tone operated on a 17 kilohertz frequency. And again, at 25, you begin to not be able to hear over 16. And so they were able to interact with each other and no one was the wiser because they couldn't hear it. Jesus said, he who has ears, let him hear. I think for many of us, and I've heard it as a pastor for many, many years, that people will often lament, Pastor, I can't hear God. I haven't been able to hear him. We, we want to hear God speak to us, but for some of us, I think that we feel like our spiritual ear hairs are way, way out of whack. Or we feel like God is speaking at some mosquito tone to where we can't hear him. Other people are more spiritual. They can hear him, but I can't hear him. Today we're looking at a parable where Jesus uses the illustration of seed, of a sower, and of soil to help us learn about two key things, hearing and growing, hearing and growing. This parable, if you will, isn't some formula Jesus is giving. Jesus isn't trying to give us some magical Christian formula that if you do the right thing, you're going to see a harvest of 30, of 60, and some hundredfold return. It's not some Christian formula. He's actually giving us some principles. He's trying to help us understand that the, the soil of our spiritual lives, the soil of our heart, the soil of our lives, our spiritual life, that that is the determining factor whether or not we will grow. It's about the soil being those things. And and we know God wants us to grow. We know from Scripture that God doesn't want you to stay the same, that he wants you to mature, that he wants you to, to develop, that he wants your faith to grow stronger. And it's not about, and even though each of the different soil types, even though they They each experience different results. It's not because God was playing favorites. It's not because Jesus was looking and and saying, oh, I like this way better than I like this, so I'm going to give this person spiritual favoritism. That's not what it is at all. But there is something to begin to understand about hearing and perceiving the soil that Jesus is trying to tell us something 
In other words, that the, the results in your spiritual life, however close you feel, however strong your faith is, the, the reality of your life, you are getting the exact results that the soil of your heart and life are in. The condition of your spirit, the condition of your, your heart is giving you the results that you see in your life in every single arena. Blaise Pascal said it like this, there is enough light for those who only desire to see and enough obscurity for those who desire the contrary. Jesus wants us to take a moment and look and in this story understand if you're willing to see you can see the condition of your heart. If if you're willing to look, you can see it. If you want to ignore the condition of your heart, you can do that too. But if you want to see your life flourish in a greater way, if you want to see your spirit grow stronger, if you want to see the roots get more strength to them, more depth to them, a richness to your spiritual life, if you want to see that, then you can see that too. It's all about what you want to see or or not see. One commentary that I read this week said it like this. The first responsibility of a Christian is to be a great listener. Now, no awards are ever given for this kind of service, but nothing worth an award can be accomplished if our ears are not tuned to God's word. The word, Old and New Testament, is clear enough if we want to learn, yet it's also obscure enough If we want to tune it out, listening has two requirements, time and concentration. Give these to God at the start of each day. I believe that today, if you are willing to lean in, you can have ears to hear what God is trying to say about your heart and life. And the same is true if you decide to tune it out, you are are welcome to do that. As well, Jesus, though, wants you to understand these truths. He wants you to have your life flourish. And so um, that's why Jesus comes along and he, and he starts to explain this very parable. See, because the disciples were like, um, Jesus, we, we heard the story. Great story. Loved it. Uh, one of your best. Um, uh, what does it mean? Like, can, can, can you explain this one to us? And Jesus has a heart to help us all understand. He has a heart to let his followers understand. And so he goes on to explain this parable as it relates to the soil. We pick up the explanation in Mark chapter 4, starting in verse 14. Let's let's look at Jesus' explanation and and see and, and look and listen to what maybe God might be saying to us about our own heart and life today. This is what Jesus said. As he explained this parable, starting in verse 14, the farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan or the accuser comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like the seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the world, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, and some even 100 times what was sown. I want to look at this parable together, and and I want you to notice a couple things right at the top. I want you to notice that this is not a progressive parable. In other words, Jesus isn't saying, first you are off the beaten path, then you turn rocky, then you get a little thorny, and then finally, if you persevere, you'll have good soil. It's not a progressive 
parable. No, it's not soil progression, but rather soil condition that Jesus is explaining. In fact, those of you watching and listening right now, I'm telling you, your heart is one of those four. It's one of those four. Like The heart and your life is in one of those conditions. It's not about soil progression. It's about soil condition. And When we realize that our lives are not bearing fruit, when we aren't seeing a harvest in our lives, if we are willing to stop and listen, God will tell you, he will speak to you, why? And the why always relates and correlates to one of these soil conditions. Always there. So so let's look at these a little bit, um, because I believe God wants you to thrive. Why? Because healthy things always thrive. Healthy things grow. So if the soil is healthy, what is planted will grow in a healthy way. So the first soil condition that Jesus talks about is the path. Everybody say the path. The path is, if you will, a wayward heart. Uh, One version refers to the path as some fell on the wayside. It was off to the side, off the beaten Path. It, was, it wasn't really in the space where the crops were meant to grow. It was just kind of off to the side. It was outside, if you will. It's an outside heart. It's an outer, outside area. It was outside the planting area. In other words, think of the path. If you have a heart like the path, it is a beaten down, trampled on, walked all over heart and life. See, the path was where animals would walk and people would trud and they would drag all their things along. It wasn't really meant to be. It was outside of everything. And for many of you and many of us, you could correlate that to your life. You feel trampled on. You feel beaten down. We would say things like they've had a really, really difficult life difficult life. This is the life that would maybe be cynical, that would maybe be offended, um, and thus the accuser is right there able to steal away everything that was tossed onto the side. As the seed is being scattered, some falls off onto the path. You might sit there and think to yourselves, but this, this scattering sure feels like a waste. I mean, like, why are you wasting all that good seed on the path? It's not going to produce anything. I think we think this about people, people who are outside the faith in Jesus, people who have an unbelieving heart, people whose heart is off the beaten path of the Christian life. And and we look at them and we're like, "I, I can't invite them to church. They're just going to say no. It's not going to do any good if I tell them I'm praying for them because they don't care. They're cynical, they're offended, they're bitter, they don't like church, they don't like anything to do with religion, they, don't, they, they have a heart that is wayward. It is a way from God. I want you to know that the Bible says in this parable that the seed was scattered, it wasn't wasted. No word of God, no truth, no life, no understanding of the gospel is ever wasted See, when you, you, the sower was the same in all four soil types. The seed was the same in all four soil types. And not once did it say as it was scattering the seed, it was wasted here, and it was a pointless time here, and don't even bother there, and just look for the good people and love the good godly people. It's not what it said. Everyone had the opportunity to hear the word, receive the word. I love that Faith Church is a place committed to creating an environment that people who have a wayward heart, a heart far away from God, can still show up and feel loved, can still show up and feel that they belong in a space, can still tune in and watch online and and just check it out a little by little because no heart that is off the beaten path, no wayward heart is a wasted heart because the word can still transform. And just because, again, remember, these aren't progressive soils. I believe that any soil type, when interacting with the right, with having the right response to the word, can become good soil automatically. How does a a wayward heart, how does the path become good soil? Well, here's how I think it becomes good soil. A wayward heart becomes good soil when you choose to believe. If a wayward heart is an unbelieving heart, then it's simply a matter of choosing to believe. And when you choose to believe and put your faith in Jesus, 
your heart becomes soft and good soil. Again, it's a work that only the Spirit can do. The path is a wayward heart, but a wayward heart becomes good soil when we choose to believe. Let's look at the second soil type. The second soil type was this rocky, or what I'm calling a hard soil. A hard soil, I believe, represents a hard heart. Hard soil represents a hard heart. I want you to realize this, that, that soil by nature is meant to start soft. Something has to happen or not happen for it to grow hard. I think about when you plant new, 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 new garden, like it's fresh, soft dirt that you plant and that you put out there. It's only because over a matter of time that that soil becomes hard. I think soil starts soft, but it's eventually made hard. Something made it hard. Maybe it was a disappointment of a dream that hardened your heart. Maybe it was an expectation that wasn't met, and then all of a sudden your heart feels like it has a failure. Maybe it's a, 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 you tried one thing and it didn't work, therefore I am the results of my life. And you begin to take on this, this, this moment of, of thinking that, that, that your heart is what you do or your life is what you do. And so, so disappointment sets in and it hardens your heart. Pride shows up in your life and it hardens your heart. Uh, th this moment of sitting there saying, I've just had a hard life, therefore I talk hard. I'm hard to everybody. I'm hard on my kids. I'm hard on my employees. I'm just hard. It's an indication of a hard heart, hard soil. But I believe a hard soil, a hard heart, when, when come to an encounter with a living God, can become a soft wonderful heart. See, hard hearts are often surface level hearts. Surface level where they show up on Sunday and enjoy Sunday experience, but they're not going to participate and read the Bible during the week because, well, it's just not enough. It's too much of a shallow heart. There is no roots. In other words, it's a surface level thing. And when you have a hard heart, you try to do all the things that you can on the surface to make it look externally healthy. But the reality is the soil is still hard and nothing is really growing. You, you show up and, and you know, it's like, yay, I love it. And then two days later you get bad news and hard news and it's like, oh, that's not worth it. I'm, I'm going to give up. I can't do it anymore. And that constant movement just allows these things to harden in our heart. It's not just the disappointments, it's not just the shallowness that makes it hard, but there's another thing that often hardens our heart, and that's sin. Those moments when we miss the mark, those moments when we know what God's standard is and we just live below it. That moment when we know we're supposed to not live so selfishly, but we live selfishly anyways. It's this, this moment where sin begins to harden our heart to the sensitivity of what God is saying and doing, to where we stop caring. We stop loving other people. We don't really care what they're walking through because our life isn't perfect either. And we've had a hard life. They've had a hard life. It doesn't matter. You've at least gotten up and done something. And so we write other people off because something in our heart stays so hard. And sin will deaden our hearts to the life of God. Sin will deaden our hearts to the joy that we were meant to be experienced. Sin will harden our hearts to morality, for clarity, and a sense of closeness to God. And all of a sudden, when we used to hear God, now we can't hear God, all because our heart has become hard. Something has deadened the inside of us. But a hard heart can become good soil. You can have a, a transformation from a hard heart to a soft heart and good soil when you simply choose to repent. Repent means to change your mind and direction. I was prideful, but now I'm going to walk in humility. I, I was trying to, to, to be angry and upset, but now I'm going to give forgiveness and walk in a different way. My, my, I have been committing these sins, but I'm going to confess these sins to God, and the deadness that I've had on the inside now becomes alive again because I'm experienced something. There's an exchange that God gives to me. It's a hard heart that becomes a soft heart and good soil when we choose to repent. A hard heart becomes good soil when we choose to repent. Here's the third soil condition that Jesus talked about. 
And again, I hope you're picking up that no matter what soil looks like in your life, no matter the state of your spirit, the state of your heart, the state of your life, it can become soft, good soil when you make simple steps towards Jesus. But here's the third. Here's the third heart, third soil type. And that's what I'm calling the thorny soil. Thorny soil is a distracted heart. Thorny soil is a crowded life. The soil that has some richness to it, has some understanding, has some softness to it, but it's crowded by so many other things. It's an unkept life like an unkept garden. Uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife more so than me, uh, actually it's entirely my wife, let's not lie to ourselves today, uh, she keeps a wonderful flower garden in our yard and often will go out and weed things. And she'll even take other plants that are good plants and spread them out because too much just crowds it out. And so it starts competing for the, the resources of the sun, the resources of the water, the resources that are naturally needed for something to... to to thrive is getting choked out and crowded out because it's just too much in one space. And for some of us, the one thing that's keeping us from really thriving and seeing our faith take off, seeing our faith grow strong, seeing that harvest that Jesus talked about, it's not sin, it's not pride, it's not an unbelieving heart, it's just a crowded life where we're distracted by so many things and often so many good things that are distracting us entirely. A cluttered life is competing for the sunlight and the water, the resources that's necessary. Listen, the potential is there in, in your life, in the soil of your life. It's just a matter of not letting the cares and the worries of life choke it out. Where you hear the word, you know the word is good, you know what God says, but immediately tragedy strikes, immediately disappointment shows, immediately you get a result from the doctor, you get a text message that just, oh, breaks your heart. You see somebody walk through something that, that, that doesn't seem good or seem like God, and, and all of a sudden your faith just starts to get choked out. You, you start living in fear instead of having a choice of belief. You start living with worry and anxiety and doubt, and, and you start living... And all of these other things start to choke out the word that you knew to be true. I think so much of what's happened in this season of the coronavirus in our world and being quarantined is, has been exposing some of the thorns that we've just allowed to grow alongside the other spiritual good in our life. And the Holy Spirit has been weeding and pulling out these things and, and helping us declutter the gardens of our hearts. The potential is there, but the cares and the worries of life, the pursuits of our own passions above God's, and the desire for wealth and riches and accolade and looking good in other people's eyes can choke out the very life of the spirit that God is trying to establish. Thorny soil is a distracted heart. The good news is, is that a distracted heart can become good soil when you simply choose to surrender. When you surrender the cares, when you, when you surrender all of the worldly pursuits and all of the busyness and all of the things that we do other than pursue God, all of the things that you choose to do other than spend time with the Lord, all the things that you do instead of to walk in faith, all of the things that are feeding your fears instead of strengthening your belief all, and understanding the love of God, and all of a sudden you listen to the accuser rather than you listen to the voice of the Spirit, and all of these things that crowd us out, if we will just stop and say, God, wait, that's a lie, I don't have to believe that. Wait, wait, God, that's, that's not the best. I'm going to give that back to you. God, I, I've been living in a place where this desire, it's been my will, not your will. So, God, I'm just going to give it back to you and let your will experience in my life. It's, it's the, the, the desire for all of these other material things, all of these other things that make our lives feel what we want them to feel, and, and they get distracted. It's not, it's not like we're living in sin. We're just distracted. 
want to travel and we want to do and our kids are running here and our schedules are picking back up now and and some of you you've been more anxious than you've ever been in this whole season because now as things begin to open and options begin to show up again you're starting to fill your life without even thinking about surrendering your own schedule to the lord again and all of the things that were that you've been detoxing from are now starting to show back up in your life because it's getting crowded out. The garden of your heart is getting crowded out. Things are competing for your attention and your affection, and they are choking the very life of God out of you. The word is always sown, and the word always works. The sower is the same. The seed is the same, and the potential in the seed is always the same. The difference in the results is always the condition of the soil. It's always the condition of the soil. And when you choose to surrender those things in your life, God says, in that moment, I will take those things back. And in your surrender, you begin to see it softened and good soil begin to show up again. Because you and I were not meant to live close-fisted with everything in our lives, controlling everything. We were actually meant to live open-handed before the Lord in everything. That's why Jesus tells us to pray about everything. So he says, in all things, always be thankful. But don't, you don't have to figure it out on your own. God has a plan that you can be led by, but it all depends on if you can hear the voice of God. Listen, you can't make the seed grow. You can't make it grow. That's the work that only the Spirit of God does. It's his power at work in your life that causes your life to start flourishing. You can't make it grow, but you can prevent it from growing. You can't make the seed grow. You can't make it work. It's already designed to work. But you can prevent it. You can't allow unbelief to creep in. You can allow sin to show up and harden your life. You can't allow offense to creep in and where now you are resistant to people and the things of God. You can allow busyness and schedules and the pursuit of money and all of these other things that you can chase after. Those things can show up. And prevent what God wants to do, you can see it being prevented. At the end of the day, it's about taking a moment to understand that Jesus wants to speak to you, that God wants to whisper to you, because if you have ears, you can hear. Romans says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. When you read God's word, you begin to understand and recognize God's voice. And when you hear God's voice speak to you, revelation shows up, something illuminates in your life, and by default, faith is built. But it all starts because you have been reading the word. The word of God is the seed that you need. Here's the bottom line today, guys. You can hear Jesus, the word, speak to you every day when you read the Bible. So as you pick up a journal, as you download the reading plan, as you crack it open this week, before you read it, before you start in, before you get to it, I just want you to pray a simple prayer. Just say, say a simple prayer and say, Lord, what do you want to say to me today because Jesus said anyone who has ears they can hear but anybody who wants to be distracted that's their choice too anyone who wants to hold on to their unbelief they can do that too anyone who wants to refuse to acknowledge the sin and the, and the patterns in their life they, that's the choice you can make that good soil, if you want to see it grow and flourish in your life, you can begin to hear God speak to you. And when you hear God speak to you, he, he shows you where your heart condition is. He'll speak to you about the soil. He'll speak to you about your life. He'll speak to you about arranging it in a way that lets you move forward in its fullness. 
Listen, you are the keeper of your own heart. I can't keep your heart. Your spouse can't keep your heart. Your parents aren't responsible for the condition of your heart and spiritual life. It is your choice. It's not the economy. It's not your boss. It's not the government. It's not society. It's not the heat. It's not the weather. It's none of it. The condition of your heart, the condition of your soil of your life is yours to tend to. Do you need to choose to believe? Is there something that maybe you need to repent? Let bitterness show up and you need to repent. Have you, has there been sin that you've just been ignoring and you've been calling it mistakes, but it's really sin? You just need to repent and acknowledge it and start thinking differently about it. Maybe there's some things that you've garnered back in your precious that's showing back up. And you're guarding it. And God is saying, would you surrender it? Stop guarding it. Stop choking it. Surrender it. Surrender it. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Here's the promise of God. I will give you a new heart. And I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You can allow the Spirit of God to live and create a new heart, a new soil. He can till it up, weed it out, and make it fresh and new today. It's simply a matter of choosing to believe today. See, you think that the work is yours to do. You think that like, oh, I got to get my ears right. Hold on, let me clean them out. Let me get my ear hair back in its place. Let me, let me listen. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But you know what I love about God is that he knows that we are helpless on our own to do those things. And it's actually the spirit that changes our heart so that then our spirit can hear what God wants to say. It takes God to pursue God kind of a thing. Jesus wanted the people to hear so bad. He knew that if they would understand that it's their heart and their life soil condition, that that would change everything. If they knew that if the, the results that they've been longing for, the life that they want to have, the joy, the peace, all the things that they need in life are found in Him. And if they're going to see that grow, then they have to change their heart. And it all starts by hearing His voice. Jesus knew that. So you know what He did? He got in a boat, pushed out from the shore, and using the sound and the science of it all that he created, with the Father and the Spirit in the beginning of time, he allowed the waters to carry the message to the people who were leaning in and listening. Well, they couldn't hear him by themselves. They, it doesn't matter how young they were. They couldn't hear it on their own. So he got out into the boat and in his grace said, I'm going to give them a way to hear my voice. I'm going to amplify it off the waters right here and right now. Friends, you might be watching right now and you're like, I've never heard God, but I want to hear God. God is drawing you in right now. And because he died to pay the price for your sins, all of a sudden that's going to give you access to begin to hear. See, because when you say yes to Jesus and you surrender your life and you choose to put your faith in him, something new happens on the inside. The spirit of God comes and lives in you and it is the spirit that wants to show you truth. It's the spirit that will show you the soil condition of your heart. He's the one that's going to reveal it. He's the one that's going to amplify the words of scripture as you read them into your heart and echo it in your spirit. And the only way you can have that experience is just by simply putting your trust in Him. And that's what we do when we come to the table of the Lord. We take the juice and we take the, the bread and we find ourselves in a moment where it's what He did for us that allows us to hear His voice again. It's Him getting in the boat of our lives to help amplify the message that we deeply need to hear week in and week out. Friends, if you'd grab the, the elements, we're gonna take them here in just a minute together. But I want you to take a moment and just pause. And would you just look at your heart right now and just simply say, Holy Spirit, what's the condition of my own heart? 
Maybe for you, you need to put your faith in Jesus. And so today, you're simply making a decision. Jesus, I choose to believe in you. I have had an unbelieving heart. It's been wayward. It's off the path. I am away from God. But today, I want to come into the family of God. Right there, right where you're at, just begin to whisper a prayer to the Lord that says something like, Jesus, would you save me? I believe in you. Would you forgive me? I need you. I give you my whole heart. I choose to believe in you that you are God's son. You prayed that prayer, you in that moment have made a shift in your heart to a believing heart. Maybe you need to surrender some things to God. Would you take a minute and just surrender them? The things that are crowding out in your life, would you just surrender those to the Lord? Maybe for you there's something that's gotten hard. There's been disappointment, there's been sin, there's been pride. And you know the soil just needs to be tilled up. Just acknowledge that before the Lord confess that, repent for it. Lord, here we are in this moment as your body, about to partake of this communion, reminding us that your body was broken for us, your blood was poured out for us. And Lord, while we take these elements today, we are acknowledging that you live in us, and you are sustaining us. You are the word that we need. It's the seed that's going to produce real change and transformation. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. For those of you that have these elements, you can pull back the top layer and grab the bread. Those at home, grab your bread. Let's take this together. And now the juice, you can peel back that second thicker layer and those at home, grab whatever you have there at the juice and go ahead and partake of that. Lord, today we as your people, we surrender fresh and new. We repent and we choose to believe. Lord, allow the, the soil of our heart to be good ground for you to produce the life, your life living through us. It's not of works, God, it's your grace. You're the one that makes it grow. We just want to do our part to keep the weeds out to keep the soil soft, and to keep it believing in you as part of the family of God. We thank you for it today. Thank you for your presence and for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, friends and family, I hope today's message was life-giving for you. I want to ask you to take a next step and go ahead and click the subscribe button so you never miss another chance to have an encounter with God. And while you're at it, take another step and share it with a friend. Maybe post it on your social network or text a coworker the link. And when you do that, you are partnering and get to be a part of seeing faith come to life in them. Hey, if Faith Church has made an impact in your life, if these messages are helping you gain traction in your faith, would you consider partnering with us financially? When you do that, it helps us widen our reach so that more people can have an encounter with the real Jesus. You can find information and ways to give on our central hub, faithchurchks.org. If, if you live in the Southeast Kansas region, we'd love to see you in person at one of our Sunday services. You can find those times on our hub as well, faithchurchks.org. Hey, remember this. God is for you and we love you.